do you think that uh Gucci Mane would have beat that case? A Boosie? Or any African American. I don't give a fuck about no guy that y'all can do that. I don't give a fuck, dog. I'm telling you what's going on. This motherfucker, his homeboy, who was probably 20 years old, was getting head by a 13-year-old. And you in the background smacking the girl on the ass. Because y'all didn't convinced. You back there like, ugh, you, you doing the X motion. You just so happy that y'all didn't convince the 13-year-old to run a train on him. Ass bottle, man. God damn, I just had that fucking call me just the other day. It's in them damn pants, probably. Fuck y'all looking at. Welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I am A.O. Canseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation, trying to get this call mix out. And this is, if you do not have your Are You Serious t shirt, you already know where the fuck to go. Don't forget to get your uh, Big Fat Podcast t-shirts also. And your um, Big Fat Podcast scullies before it get cold. Make sure you put all your information in your PayPal note also. Alright, look. Um, dry ass fucking call me, dog. Uh, I just wanted to bring something to the forefront. Um... A lot of talk, a lot of speculation to me, because I never actually looked into it, and I'm guessing y'all y'all haven't done it either. It's a lot of this whole child molester. The word has been thrown around a lot um, with this Bedford case I just broke, and with all of the Catholic priests and shit like that, and just with me, you know, what I'm saying having my daughter more often now. It seems like this is something that's probably more of a issue. Than I've been giving um, it credit for. So what I want to do is go into Six Nine's case, and we're gonna go into every artist who has a um, sexual uh, abuse charge on children. We're gonna go into it and see if it's just somebody talking shit or if it's actually real. What I found out about this Six Nine case, well, we'll go over it together. Let's read this shit. All right. Um, 6 9 play, play guilty to one count of use of a child in a sexual performance back in October 2015, long before he was famous. In legal documents, prosecutors say Takashi was at a party in Harlem where a 13-year-old girl was taped engaging in sexual acts with another man while Takashi... 18 at the time, stood behind the child, making a thrust, thrusting motion with his pelvis and smacking her on the buttocks. Prosecutors say the child is nude in the video. The rapper's sentence was deferred for two years if he complied with certain conditions, like getting mental health treatment and staying out of trouble. The judge would only give him probation. The problem for Takashi was he got arrested in Texas and Brooklyn. So, the Mexican that we know is lying about all this gangster shit that he, that he talks about. We know he's lying. We know that he's lying. 
we know that he's not really a blood gang member. But y'all don't believe in the rap trap. And you don't believe in the golf course that I've explained. Do you think that uh, Gucci Mane would have beat that case? A Boosie? Or any African American? I don't give a fuck about no guy that y'all can do that. I don't give a fuck, dog. I'm telling you what's going on. This motherfucker, his homeboy, who was probably 20 years old, was getting head by a 13-year-old, and you in the background smacking the girl on the ass because y'all didn't convince you back there like, ugh, you, you doing the X motion. You just so happy that y'all didn't convince the 13-year-old to run a train on him. And this, and see, that that's another reason why I want somebody to holler at me, man, because I want to start getting some of these shows animated so that I can better illustrate what's actually taking place here. I mean, because just take this, I mean, just, I, I want you to be here with me. Your little cousin, your 13 year old cousin, she probably, you know what I'm saying, bad in school or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying, maybe she's good in school. But you know, you're in this type of neighborhood. She go to a little house or whatever like that. Before she come home from school, she put her book bag down. They playing music. One of the dudes take her to the back room, and here come Daniel Hernandez sneaking in. I come in now. I come in now. Then once he get in, like they got the camera set up and everything. Ain't that, ain't that the same fucking reason why the little boy Junior got killed? Didn't Junior get killed because of a tape that came out of an underage girl having sex or some shit like that? Honestly, I, I do believe there's something that can happen here if the public was to, you know what I'm saying, stop fucking with the music. But to be honest, I think his true fan base is 13 and 14 year olds. And they do not get any of this shit. What they get is mainstream. What they're pumping on the mainstream. Artists that we're, we've never fucking heard of. I'm doing a story on a fucking group called NCT NTC 127. It's another fucking Chinese group. One of these fucking K-pop bands that are taking over and shit like that. They took, the, I'm telling you what the fuck they did. They took Lil Baby's song Drip Too Hard. They took that whole fucking hook and made a whole song out of it. You can tell it they're Chinese. They know nothing about what they... And they tell them I would drill. Don't stand too close. And I got to do a story like showing how they did that. Because these are the type of things that need to be brought to the light. Um, and it's being pumped into the main fucking stream. And they're not catching the shit. Because it's a fucking machine pushing the mainstream shit. You ask a 13, an average 13, 14, 15, 16 year old about 9-11, about the moon landing. And they won't even know about it. And that's the issue. They 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 have they have this shit set up so fucking perfect. The shit that we tune into, us as thinking people, the shit that we tune into, they don't even know exists. And the shit that they tune into, like the twenty four have you ever heard of a twenty four hour challenge where you go stay somewhere for twenty four hours? 
like a Walmart, you stand up, you like you, you have to dodge employees and shit like that, not get caught for 24 hours, break into a school and stay there for 24 hours without anybody noticing. Um, they have that shit. Um, and just a whole bunch of other stupid ass shit that we have no ideas going on because it's fucking retarded. But the shit that we tune into trying to find out exactly what's going on and try to predict the next attack that comes on us is the least of their fucking worries. And that's what I battle with. Like, you know what I'm saying? How do you get to the people that matter, which is the kids, the future? If all of them are brainwashed, they'll look at us like we're fucking insane. If all of them are brainwashed, when we try to tell them Hey, look, I don't mean to scare you. And I'm, I'm proud of you for going to school and, and getting a good grade, but pretty much everything they told you is a fucking lie. Money really has no value, though you need it. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? How does it, shit like that would never make sense to them if they have no... If they discourage open thinking in school... Even though they tell me they want to be a unique and all this shit like that. They really don't want you to be unique. They want you to be one in the fucking same so you're easier to control. They don't want sheeps to do their own thing. They want them to do what all the rest of the sheeps do. And nobody, nobody will look into something unless they're told to. Why has no one looked into this shit? Like, like I'm saying, or or do we expect this from him? And why does he get a pay? Why does he get a pass? Because we expect this from him. Because we don't expect this from um, money bag yo. It destroys his career. But because we already see six nine as a fucking troll. When he gets bam for fucking with children, just like how Trippy Red was fucking with the Catch Me Outside bitch before she was even, you know what I'm saying, 14 years old. Like, fuck that shit. Yeah, they probably did that shit, but fuck it. Because you don't listen to them. You know what I'm saying? Because they, you're not a fan of them. You don't give a fuck. But it's like, these motherfuckers should be destroyed. And it's not enough for us to just say fuck them motherfuckers because, yeah, we can say fuck them, but we're not buying their music. You know what I'm saying? So we don't hurt them either way. If it's really fuck them, it's like we should do something, we should actively do something to make motherfuckers feel that we don't allow that. But it's so much weird shit going on in the industry and being passed off and accept it as just being their fucking style or this is just my thing. Like, what up? Like, dog, my style used to mean DMX, you know what I'm saying? Being aggressive and barking like a dog. Um, Jay Z, the cool, calm, collected. Nas, giving you information as he raps. Um, I don't want to say that because, I, well, fuck it. Pete Rock, you know what I'm saying? Having a band with him. You know what I'm saying? Being a, a gritty lyricist from Philadelphia. Outcast being, you know what I'm saying? Country niggas with a mind, but dressed like crazy niggas. You know what I'm saying? But being just outlandish with shit. Everybody, that was that was people's style. Now a motherfucker's style truly means the way that they look and they dress. When Outkast came like that, it was kind of a, like, Andre 3000 was kind of paying homage to them, uh, the motherfuckers that, that used to, was that Boosie Collins, the motherfucker who used to, like, dressing that shit, like that, that Funkadelic shit, whatever like that, like, it was something like that, but even then... I can't really say that. I was going to say even then he only did that shit in videos. But you would still see Andre 3000 at 
every time you seen him. You know what I'm saying? He would be with that shit. You know what I'm saying? Dressing like that. But I don't think he was dressing gay. You know, Prince, Michael Jackson. And I... You know what I'm saying? They they blurred the line so fucking much. You know what I'm saying? Then for Kanye West to bring that faggot shit in. I keep telling motherfuckers that gay shit began when Wayne introduced that goddamn skateboard in them fucking skinny jeans. That was the fucking beginning. You know, we can say as far as dressing goes, you know, Cameron came in, whatever like that, but he made that shit look live, dog. You know what I'm saying? It was a difference, man. He made that shit look live, man. That shit was gangster. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make something that's not gangster look gangster. These niggas not making painted fingernails look gangster. These niggas not making dresses look gangster. Because there's no way to do that shit. Cameron took a color that girls wore. Not fucking panties. You know what I'm saying, man? So, you know, it, it's just that that when that door was open and these motherfuckers, man, you know, I got a bombshell I'm going to drop, man. I'm a, I got a real bombshell I'm going to drop when we start talking about the, you know, the feminization of the black man and who's behind that shit and what, and what, what role hip-hop plays in that whole thing. You know what I'm saying? That's not no accident, man. It's not no accident at all. And... I'm just trying to see, like, what era are we in where a rapper currently is making money on tour, living life like it's all love. He just got, he pled guilty to slapping a 13-year-old on the ass while she was giving his homeboy a head. And he recorded the whole thing, my nigga. Come on, what are we doing right now? And there's no repercussions. And if you think, and so what I'm asking, what I'm asking like niggas to do, I keep on, you know, calling on niggas on some shit like, you don't see what's going on? Like, you don't see what's going on? Like, what's rocking? Trippy Red not getting in no trouble. Lil Xan not getting in no trouble. Bad Baby not getting in no trouble. Look down these motherfuckers' timeline. Like, once these motherfuckers get famous, and even before they got famous, they wasn't getting in no trouble. Like, know what I'm saying? How y'all niggas getting in trouble? Lil Baby just got his chain snatched, dog. They putting African-American male rappers. They don't really give a fuck about the black female rappers. It's the African-American male that's the issue. Listen to what I'm telling you, dog. The African-American male... There will never be a fucking system presented in this country that is for you. If you succeed in any one of the systems that are made in this country, it is by accident. It was not made for you to succeed. So when they tell you that this is made like... Specifically for you, and it's a win, you need to be looking at that motherfucker three times. And if it still look good, look at it four times. Rappers are nothing but motherfucking court jesters. Lil Baby got his chain snatched. Kevin Gates and them is over here um, beefing with NBA Youngboy, Fred O'Bain, Baby Joe, and Percy Keith. You know what I'm saying? That whole thing is falling apart. It's just more, like, what is this? We have no reason to look at love and hip hop. We got all the drama we can take right here, but it's real fucking life. We can really watch a nigga's life end. We can see exactly what the antithesis was, meaning we can see exactly what the camp, the last straw that broke the camel's back. We can see exactly where everything went wrong, where it started at. For a nigga's life to end. And I don't think these things are coming by fucking accident. And tell me a rapper that has 
escape this circus that we call hip hop, rap, music industry. Name me one artist, a successful artist that has escaped it. Don't I don't want to go here, I don't want to go there. I'm not talking about the lyricists, poets, and shit like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this thing right here. This thing. I'm talking about gangster rap music. Where the devil lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to kill niggas. I want to sell niggas dope. I rob niggas. Show me somebody within this. An African-American male. Because we know that the white boys, the Mexicans and all them, they can just do this shit. And it's all love. The African-American male that makes this music that can escape, that has escaped the rap trap. You look at 6 9 and you look at his record and you let me know if a nigga would have came home from that. Let alone be on top of the game right now and got four years of probation. This nigga go to court more than goddamn the DA do. That's probably why the fuck you get off, because he is the fucking police. And they know that he can help whatever case they got going on. But how in the fuck do we get that to the fucking idiots? You know they say, um, no matter how smart you are, you'll never get a you'll never convince a stupid person that they're stupid. What it is. We'll be talking more about um, Yellow Beezy. We're going to talk more about the um, Kevin Gates situation. we got to talk more about the little Baby situation. And make sure that you're going to the Big Homes Network and looking at all the What You Say, uh, all the episodes of the What You Say series. We just did Young Greatness over there. Uh, the link to the Big Homes Network is in the description box. And just like this is the Big Facts Podcast, but this show is called Are You Serious? Over there, it is the Big Homes Network, and the show is called What You Say. Um, in hindsight, is another show. And then we got interviews over there also. Um, the story I just did on the Bedford Rapist, rapist we're going to have some people from Bedford speak on it from a um, person that's on the ground, you know what I'm saying, perspective. Because I've been getting a lot of feedback on that store. So be tuned for all that. Uh, make sure you hit the PayPal and I'll see y'all in a minute. Love.